A young boy was devastated at his mother's grave, wishing he could be with her. He couldn't imagine living without her. Then he suddenly felt a woman's hand on his shoulder, making him jump Kevin was only six years old when his mother died in an accident. He's been living at an orphanage since then as he never found out who his father is and doesn't have any other family members to take him in. The young boy didn't like living in the orphanage. He constantly daydream about his mother one day taking him away from there to live with her again. The other children would mock him, teasing him that his mother was dead and that he'd never see her again. You need to face the truth, Kevin. Your mother is no longer alive and you'll never see her again. Stop being a baby, one of his roommates would say. Kevin would cry all day, which caused the children to tease him even more. You're such a crybaby. No one's going to want to adopt you, they'd say. One day, the children from the orphanage were allowed to take a walk outside in a nearby park. While they were busy playing, Kevin ran away from them and sprinted towards the city cemetery without looking back. Kevin knew where his mom was buried as he promised he would visit her often. However, he hasn't been able to keep his promise as they were barely allowed out by the orphanage. When he saw his mother's grave, he sat there and cried. I miss you so much, Mom. Please take me with you, he sobbed. There's nothing for me here. After a few moments, Kevin suddenly felt a hand on his shoulder. He wiped his eyes and looked back. There a beautiful woman stood with rays of sunlight shining over her, which made her look like she was glowing. Why are you crying, sweet boy? Are you all right, she asked. I don't have a mother anymore, I miss her, Kevin replied sadly. I'm sorry to hear that, sweetheart. Where do you live now? The woman asked. In the orphanage, Kevin told her. I'm Susan, the woman said, sitting beside Kevin. I visit the cemetery to visit my son's grave, she revealed. Upon hearing her name, Kevin's eyes widened. He smiled and excitedly said, that's my mother's name too. The woman smiled and accompanied Kevin back to the orphanage. The woman spotted a small amusement park on the way back and asked if he wanted to go. Kevin nodded his head excitedly. Kevin happily rode on the carousel and ate ice cream with Susan. Susan took him back to the orphanage and said goodbye when they were done. Your mom loves you, sweetheart. Never doubt that, she said before leaving. That night, Susan went to church and prayed that Kevin would find a loving family. When she went to bed, she suddenly had a strange dream. In her dream, her late son Adam gave her a note with the address 443 Washington Street. Before waking up, her son told her, Mom, please take me with you. This dream occurred to Susan multiple times in a week. Bothered about what it could mean, Susan revealed everything to her husband. It's so strange, honey. I've dreamed about Adam handing me a note with a certain address. He keeps telling me to take him with me, she said. What could it mean? What is Adam trying to tell you? Her husband, Richard, asked. I don't know, but I've been having the same dream ever since I met this young boy named Kevin at the cemetery. He was visiting his mom, and he said he lived at the orphanage, so I took him there, she explained. Richard and Susan decided to visit the address from her dreams. True enough, 443 Washington Street could be found in their city. When they drove to the address, Susan was surprised to see the orphanage where she had walked Kevin a couple of days prior. Immediately, Susan spotted Kevin sitting by the window on the ground floor. She pointed him out to her husband, saying that it was Kevin she had met in the cemetery. What are you doing there, sweetheart? Susan asked the young boy, who was thoughtfully looking up at this sky. I'm praying that my mother will take me from here, the young boy revealed. Susan and Richard looked at each other, and they immediately knew what they wanted to do. They decided to adopt Kevin and did everything they could to provide him with a happy life. 
Kevin was surprised that someone showed interest in adopting him. It made him even happier to find out that it was Susan and her husband, Richard, who wanted to do so. God answered my prayers, Kevin told Susan and Richard one day while having dinner. My mom did take me away from the orphanage, and now I'm here with my family, he smiled. God answered my prayers too, sweetheart. When I met you that day, I went to church and prayed that you'd find a loving family. I didn't know it then, but I'm glad that we ended up being your family. Thank you for giving us a chance, Kevin, she smiled holding his hand. If you liked this one, here's another story for you. Recently, during the middle of the night, a 911 dispatcher received a call from an 18-year-old boy who spoke weakly. Hello, can somebody help me? I haven't eaten in days and am unwell. The boy spoke weakly. The dispatcher immediately notified the police to be on standby. She requested details on the boy's whereabouts and his description. He described his neighborhood and revealed that he found a couple of pennies lying around the trailer he lived in, which he used to call in the payphone. Please come help me. I don't know how much time I have left, the boy said. Help is on the way, sweetheart. Go back to your trailer and stay there until the cops arrive, okay, the dispatcher replying before hanging up the phone. In just a couple of minutes, an officer named Jason Parker was sent to the scene. It's better not be one of those prank calls again. He said to himself as he drove towards the trailer, he immediately knocked on the trailer door and introduced himself when he got there. Officer Parker here responding to a 911 call, anyone home. Nobody answered the door, but he could hear a faint voice coming from inside. He entered and saw Frey little boy clutching his stomach as he lay on the ground. Help me, the boy whispered. As Officer Parker took another step inside, he realized that the boy was not alone. On a small worn out mattress, a woman was asleep. Ma'am, he called out trying to wake her up. She didn't respond, so Officer Parker decided to check her pulse. It was weak and slow. What's your name, young boy? My name's Adam. My mom's name is Lisa, the boy replied quietly. How long have you and your mother been here? What happened? The officer asked. Mommy lost her job at the factory four days ago. Said she doesn't have work. We haven't been able to eat the past three days. The boy said in tears, my mom is weak and doesn't want to wake up. We need to help her. At this point, Officer Parker knew he had to act quickly. He called for medical backup so they could take Lisa to the hospital. When the ambulance arrived, they carried Lisa on a stretcher while Adam rode with Officer Parker in his patrol car. Your mom will be all right, Adam. Don't worry about it, he assured the worried child. Doctors diagnosed Lisa's malnourished believing that she hadn't eaten properly even before she lost her job. They suggested she remain in the hospital until she regained her strength and made a full recovery. What's going to happen to me while mommy is in the hospital? Adam asked, suddenly scared after hearing that his mother would have to stay there for a while. There are social workers here who can take you to a foster family for the time being. When your mom's recovered, you'll be able to see her again. Officer Parker explained. At that point, Adam began to cry. A foster family, I don't want to be sent there. Please Officer Parker do something. He saw as Officer Parker was a bachelor, he realized that he was capable of taking care of the child for the weeks that his mother would be in the hospital. He asked the social workers if it was possible, and they said it was preparing the paperwork. While waiting for the paperwork, he decided to take Adam somewhere so he could eat. You must be very hungry. How about a good meal at a restaurant? He asked the young boy. Thank you, Officer Parker. Yes, Adam said, clinging to the officer's arm as if they'd known each other for years. The gesture melted Jason's heart and made him wonder why he hasn't settled down and started his own family. 
Adam and Officer Parker enjoyed a nice balanced meal of protein, carbs, and vegetables so that Adam could slowly regain his strength and energy. By the time they finished their meal, the little boy was feeling a lot better and was able to talk a lot more. He shared that it had always just been him and his mom living in their trailer after his father abandoned them when he was a baby. While his mom worked at the factory, he often walked to and from school and waited for his mom to come home. Unfortunately, a budget cook caused his mother to lose her job and they had no spare money to buy even the simplest food items. I'm happy you came to get us, Officer Parker. I was so hungry and I was scared my mommy would die, the boy explained. Officer Parker was heartbroken to hear about Adam's story and he made a promise to himself that he would help Adam and Lisa as much as he could. When they'd gone back to the hospital, it was revealed that he was approved as Adam's foster father and he could take him home that night. Adam said goodbye to his mom and promised he'd be back the following day. Jason prepared the spare bedroom in his apartment for Adam to sleep in and told him to sleep as long as he wanted as it was already late. The following morning, Jason prepared food for Adam and his mom, Lisa. He always enjoyed cooking and he was glad to have people to share his dishes with now. Adam woke up a little before lunchtime and was delighted to see that there was food on the table. Thank you, Officer Parker, he said in delight. You don't need to call me, Officer Parker. Just call me Jason, he said with a smile as he put some food on Adam's plate. After Adam finished eating, they headed to the hospital where Lisa was already conscious. Mom, Adam exclaimed running to hug his mom who was in her hospital bed. Hey sweetie, Lisa said stroking Adam's head as he leaned on her stomach. I'm so happy to see you. Mom, this is Officer Parker. I mean Jason, he took care of me after he found us at home. He made you some food too. He said excitedly. Lisa glanced to Jason and smiled. Thank you so much for your kindness, Jason, she said. You're welcome. It's no problem. You have a sweet boy. Don't worry about him. I'll take care of him. Just focus on getting well, Jason told Lisa, who nodded appreciatively. Every day, Jason would care for Adam. He cooked him meals, took him to school in his patrol car, and accompanied him to the hospital when Adam's school and his police work were done for the day. After a couple of weeks, Lisa made a full recovery and was clear to go home. Adam was saddened that he would no longer be seeing Jason every day, but Jason promised he'd visit. Every time he visited Adam, he got to know Lisa a little more, and the more they talked to each other, the more they started to feel a connection. Eventually, they admitted their feelings for each other. Jason and Lisa ended up falling in love, and they got married in a simple civil ceremony with Adam as their witness. Adam was delighted to have Jason as his father, and eventually their family grew when they welcomed a baby girl nine months later. I can't believe a response to a 911 call would lead me to find a family, Jason told us new wife Lisa one day. Who had thought? Lisa said, leaning on Jason's shoulder. I can't believe I'm fortunate enough to have someone as kind, caring, and generous as you and my partner for life. No matter how bad life gets, always remember that people will be ready to help you. I'll always be here for you and Adam, Jason said. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider sharing it with someone who may find it interesting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. If you liked this one, here's another story for you. It takes a lot of courage, strength and love to adopt children, so we should applaud those who chose this path. Both the future parents have taken on the unique challenge of raising a child and have also made the extra effort to provide their child with a second chance in life. Mila Wade was adopted by Joseph and Shannon Wade, a couple from Utah. 
In the year 2013, he'd been born to a teenage mother who had reached out to active love adoptions. And Joseph and Shannon had finally become as adoptive parents as a result of their efforts. In spite of this, she got back in touch with a couple five years later. This time she asked whether they'd be interested in adopting a little girl who she was pregnant with. The child would be Mayo's young sister. Joseph elaborated as follows. They contacted us and said, Mayo is going to be a big brother. And they asked if we would consider adopting his sister. Milo will become a big brother to a baby girl. I remember thinking to myself, wow, that's a huge one. Even if the Waits had a strong interest in the matter, there were several factors to consider. They already had adopted a son named Milo, and they also had a biological son named Nash. The Waits had maintained consistent communication with Milo's mother, sending her letters as he was growing up to keep her apprised of how he was doing and how he was progressing in his life and his development. On the other hand, she never once had any hints that this might be the case. Shannon stated that they do have a nice relationship with her and that they think the world of her for being able to be so selfless and just enable them to be parents. Despite this, the Waits believed that they were not ready to take on the role of parents for another time. At the time, baby Nash was only 20 months old and adding a third baby to the mix would unquestionably raise the pressure on the family, both at the time and in the future. However, according to Shannon, things started to become more obvious. When I first saw it, my initial instinct was, we can't do this, but if she was destined to come home with us, none of the other stuff matters and everything will figure itself out. After mulling over the concept for a week, they finally arrived at a decision which was made possible with the assistance of Milo himself. As soon as he learned that his birth mother was going to be a mother for a second time, he immediately told Joseph and Shannon that they needed to bring his sister home as well. Annie Pearl, who is Milo's biological sister, was born on February 25, 2019. As the events transpired, after barely two days in the hospital, she was finally brought home by her adopted parents. Annie is thriving at home with her two older brothers and her devoted parents who want nothing more than a provider with the best life has to offer. Over 100,000 foster children are eligible for adoption and are waiting for a new family to call their own, according to statistics. Cole and Jordan Dickerson are accustomed to being amongst the exorbitant number of people in the adoption waiting list. The devoted couple had long desired to start a family. Additionally, they're both quite receptive to the notion of adopting a child that needs a home. When Jordan Dickerson and Jeremiah came into contact, Jordan immediately felt a strong connection and was more than willing to provide the boy with a loving home. Jordan met Jeremiah while working as a pediatric nurse at the Lel Bonchur Children's Hospital. Jordan remembered how she and Jeremiah first connected with one another and how we fell in love with his grin and his pleasure. We simply knew he'd fit in with our family. No one could dispute it. In actuality, Jeremia was a patient at the Children's Hospital due to his illness. Jeremia was looking for a family to help him with a trash tube he was wearing at the time. Jordan explained how she persuaded her understanding husband to allow her to adopt Jeremia by saying, I sensed there was something different about him. I was unable to shake him from my mind. Please pray that we can bring Jeremia home. I asked my husband over the phone. Therefore, the disappointment Jordan and Cole felt when they learned that Jeremiah had already returned home with a foster family broke their hearts. When Jordan heard the sad news, she said, I knew that he was meant to be our son, so I was bewildered and devastated. The odds appear to be in their favor, though. Cole highlighted on Love What Matters page. The difficult but beautiful path he and Jordan went through before starting the family they'd always wanted. Jordan, my wife, is employed by the Love Bonjour Children's Hospital. 
She once informed me that there was the cutest little lad there at the time. She claimed that the only reason he's there is the lack of family to care for him. Just a few weeks later, when I was at work, I received a text asking, Babe, will you genuinely pray and think about something? My heart starts to raise because I immediately assume that she's dealing with a significant issue. We had both expressed our love for adoption and our wish to do so in the future. We discussed it, prayed about it, and decided to sign up for the foster parent training classes that the organization mandated. When we spoke with DHS, they said it was almost impossible to start the foster to adopt procedure for a particular child if you're not yet linked to them. It would require a miracle. The rest of the narrative is solely comprised of that. Another couple arrived and started raising him during the process, which emotionally devastated us greatly because we had already grown to care for him. We were disappointed and angry, but we made the decision to keep going in the programs in order to eventually become foster parents and real parents to a child. Through the article he had written and uploaded on Love What Matters. Cole told his story two weeks later while we were traveling to celebrate our anniversary. Jordan's coworker contacted to inform her that Jeremiah had been admitted to the hospital once again for medical reasons and that the couple would no longer be able to care for him due to personal issues. As soon as we started crying, we realized that this was God's doing and that we would one day have a family. His social worker requested to meet Jordan at Le Bon Chur after we returned from our vacation to ensure we were committed to fostering to adopt. In June 2017, after completing legal, medical, and fostering training, we were allowed to bring our boy home. And on June 16th, 2018, we were able to adopt our kid in a legal manner. Luckily for Cole and Jordan, everything seems to be working in their favor. Jeremiah has now been legally recognized as their son after much waiting in a difficult adoption process. There's more to their enduring tale though. Cole also included a comprehensive account of the day. They learn that Jeremiah will soon become an elder brother in the same piece. Jeremiah was praying one night in April, 2018. Thank you God for Jesus, my mom and dad and my baby sister in a few weeks. He said, Amen. What did he just say? We thought as we exchanged confused looks, but that's not really how it works. We were shocked to learn that Jeremiah will have a baby brother or sister only a few weeks later. When it comes to the baby sister today, he was right. We only learned yesterday. We are really grateful to be a family as the miracle worker continues to accomplish his work. Paul, Jordan, and their friends gathered at the courts on July 16, 2018 to commemorate Jeremiah's official adoption into the Dickerson family. The family proudly posed for a photograph to celebrate a special occasion in their lives and make precious memories. Jeremiah proudly displayed the banner that stated today I became a Dickerson while sporting a broad smile. Next up, Big Brother. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider sharing it with someone who may find it interesting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.